Joining me now, Derek Janssen von Rensburg, Portfolio Manager at BOE Stockbrokers. And I wish you were privy to the conversation that Derek and I were having uh, off air. And of course, we're debating as to whether we should be optimistic or sad or worried. And Derek, you're sitting here with a big smile, and I'm telling you, but Lonman is down dramatically, 5%, and you know, you're know, you saying platinum is not really something we should look at. I mentioned Tiger Brands, you're saying no, markets are not responding well to those results. Yeah. So, I mean, you've, you've got a reason for all the red behind me, so let's start. Yeah, well, look, I think what you've got to do is you've got to look into a market situation, and you've got to understand that the market is divided up into fundamental buyers, then you've got speculators that tend to try and trade the market in the short term. And then you've got sentiment. And I think that sentiment is an overriding factor in any market. And at the moment, as you were talking earlier, the sentiment at the moment is very bearish. So the sentiment at this stage of the game, very overridingly bearish. And I think that causes a lot of people to sort of overreact at times like this. So, so this is an overreaction that we're worried about Greece leaving the Eurozone? I, I think so. And if they do leave the Eurozone, you could see some further downside. And you don't know that. You can't predict information flow to that, to, yeah. to that sort of accuracy. But uh, what I'm saying is, is that the sentiment is so bearish. And if you are a smart money investor, this is a very nice opportunity to look at accumulating stock, taking a long-term view, and choosing some good value plays that, con that, that are out there in the market at this time. Yes, the global story and the global picture doesn't look good, but I see this as an accumulation phase that you've got to look for a diversified portfolio, giving you exposure into top 20 blue chip stocks. And then as the sentiment starts to wane a little bit and the picture starts a little bit rosier, then when the market sort of rallies... So you, okay, you're talking 20, top 20 blue chip stocks. stocks. Sorry, sorry to interject there. I mean, you um, are you looking at those resource resource counters which are offering value right now, PEs of like 6, 7, yeah, they looking do, so attractive. They, they, are lo they are looking attractive, but the lower commodi commodity prices tell you that these PEs could potentially unwind a little bit further down to sort of the 9 or the 10 mark. And... The, the stocks at these levels are pricing that in. And in my opinion, if you're going to go into this market, you can't just go in gung-ho into one sector. You've got to give yourself exposure to a range of sectors, whether it be resources, industrials, banks. You need exposure to, to, to a combination of those things. If you look at the value proposition in this market, you've got to look at the resource sector. Yes, there is definitely value there. The growth in the East is, is not giving you a convincing sort of strong throw all your money at the, at, the, at the market at this stage, but it's definitely a bottom picker's market. So to try and call the bottom in a market, yeah. I don't think anyone can do. But from a value proposition point of view, I think you've got to take and at some point commit some of your money to the market, say, right, I'm going to take some resources. You look at Rit uh, Richmond that came out with some fantastic numbers. Now, that has been very strong. We Richmond's see it down 3% today at 49 Rand 7. Down 3%, but last week when we saw such a strong sell-off, that stock was up nearly 5 or 6% in one day. So, you know, some profit taking is probably due in a stock like that. So the weakness you've got to see is an opportunity to, to accumulate and create a diversified portfolio looking forward. Okay, so, I mean, we've got Anglo-American down almost 3%. 265, there was a 330 earlier this year. BHB Berlin, 222, down almost 3%. Um, you know, even Bidvest is under pressure today, down 2.5%. When you look at such a negative day, is this a time and opportunity for you to add? Yes. To some of those stocks that you like? Yes, it is definitely. Look, you, you obviously want to get your finger on the timing as, as accurately as possible and just looking at what the U.S. market is doing at the moment and potentially what the sell-off is, is, is happening at the moment. The sell-off could happen maybe another day and you could see some further weakness at these levels. But, you know, Anglo's under 270 for me is, is looking very attractive as a buy. I look at Billiton towards 220 or under 225 is looking very attractive. Mm -hmm. Bidvest has had a strong rally from the 150 mark all the way up to that 175, 180 mark. So at these levels, the weakness I'm seeing is an opportunity to get in and to stay in those okay, blue chip so stocks. Okay, so while these you know, good quality stocks are coming under pressure and really trading at very low PEs on the, the resource front, we've got the retailers just doing so well. And I was looking at Mr. Price uh, results coming through. Headline earnings per share up by 20%, uh, percent, uh, dividends increasing by 25% or so. Um, Taste Holdings also coming out with some positive numbers. Famous Brands looks pretty strong. We're just getting a very good picture from these retailers. Can it sustain itself? And are you exposed to the sector? Yes, I am exposed to the sector, and I think that it's done very well. The wind has been in the sales in the retail sector for some time now. But if you look at it on the ground and you look at the valuations of these retail players, and earlier you mentioned the, the consumer stocks being very attractive, particularly in the food uh, retail space. If you look at the numbers that's, or the trading statement that SPA released not so long ago, SPA re-rated quite, quite mm. harshly on the back of that. So 
to price in and say that these numbers are going to continue. I don't expect strong, strong, consistent outperformance in terms of sort of 50% upside in the retail space from here on out. Yes, they're going to do well and there's always going to be demand for them. It's going to give you almost like a defensive mechanism in a portfolio. But I don't see them being the strong outperformers looking two years out from now. Mr. Price is down 5.4% today, so clearly markets are not like, liking those numbers. No, exactly. And Mr. Price, again, had a very strong run from around 90 Rand all the way up towards that 110 mark. So now it's sitting at 96. So sorry. coming down under that 100 Rand level, yeah, you've got to argue. Maybe it's giving you an opportunity. It's a nice retail business, and I think that uh, the growth is still consistent in that space. But for me to go and commit new money into these retailers, you've got to be a bit picky and a bit choosy within the retail space. If you're in the retailers... Let them run and, like I said, let the wind and the sails take you a little bit further, but have a little bit of exposure there. Okay, so you're calm, not worried with all the No, I the don't think so. I think when there's panic and the sentiment <laughs> is like this, it gives a nice Derek opportunity. Derek always smiles. Thank you so much, sir. Great to have you on the program, Derek Yansif and Rensburg.